Hello everybody and welcome to another knockoff review thanks to the team over at ShowZ. In today's video I'm taking a look at the final set from Jin Bao, the Set C. They're two final Constructicons to form the oversized KO of Gravity Builder aka Devastator. The box has some really nice artwork on it, loving that design there. And like the other members of this set, they come in a plastic clamshell. We get two sets of instructions and I've got a baggie filled with goodies. Here they both are outside of their plastic prison. Now, like the previous offerings in this line, these are not MP uh, in aesthetic. These are based on kind of a generations line, so to speak. Uh, we get a hefty gun with this figure. It is literally massive. Uh, really nice big fat handle on there. We get the crane hook, which can come down. Extend out as well with a hinge here. Love that joint. It's really nice build quality on this. Again, Jimbo have kind of outdone themselves. They're definitely getting better and better. And they're teasing aerial bots now. I'm not really sure whose aerial bots are going to boot like. <laughs> or maybe they'll make their own. That'd be a novel idea, wouldn't it? There's the large chest piece. And we get uh, the guns that come with this set. And we also get uh, these additional ladder pieces. We get a battery. We get a faceplate as well. All right, first of all, let's take a look at their dump truck. I think that's what the Generation Toys called him anyway. Uh, got this section at the back here, which can fold down like so, or it can come up and sit above. That's kind of how I like to have it. Nice silver head sculpt on there, and you've got light piping in the back of those eyes. Uh, those don't feel quite as thick as their previous offerings in terms of plastic consistency. And some of the joints are slightly looser as well, especially like his ankle pivot. Now you can kind of rock it forward and get it to sit back on itself. Otherwise, he does tend to kind of just lean backwards. Not really sure how I'm going to avoid that. I think you're just going to have to keep rocking these and just kind of make them work for yourself. Now I've got him holding his weapon there and his gun in that hand and on the back there he does have a bit of a diaper going on uh, not really sure how i can avoid that but we do get nice big rubber tires again we've got a couple of sprue marks around the edges uh, it does feel a little bit more rushed in comparison to their other releases uh, not really sure if it has been it's just that kind of sense i'm getting from it but one thing I would like to bring to your attention is why on earth did they not give us an oversized version of the Gravity Builder upgrade kit that Generation Toys did? Uh, I know there are some customizers working on kits. I think half the battle is doing an exact kind of oversized replica of the kit, but it's something that they should have included it would have made such a difference because it gives him the leg extenders that gives them the more kind of g1 style head and personally i think they would have hit a lot tension of a lot more of those fans and made it kind of a more viable option to compete against the toy world devastator but they didn't it's been left to the fans and our hook or crane figure uh, he's got quite a bit going for him this backpack is very heavy you can kind of have it as you see fit or slide it offwards you don't even need it on again rubber tires throughout love the uh, head sculpt on him as well love that kind of flat top look that he's got going on they've left nice spaces here for the decepticon insignia again though his feet are slightly looser than what i'm kind of used to from jim bao uh, they normally excel in things like this but there's not so much it's just a little bit shy of what they've produced in the past in my opinion but that being said it's still going to form an almighty awesome devastator now which is going to keep a lot of fans happy and personally i think i'll keep mine in their robot modes 
or possibly even let him go. But of course, I'll wait to see what add-on kits we get as well, because uh, look what we got with TFC's Hercules. We got hundreds of different add-on kits, which made the world of difference in the end. And you're saving yourself a lot of money by getting this as well, because it is dirt cheap in comparison. Uh, just to give you an idea of how these scale, uh, this is the Magic Square Optimus Prime. He is MP10 size. So these don't look too bad. These are bigger than Voyager, but again, I just don't seem to capture that realism level of the masterpiece figures and the joints, etc. They're not quite up to scratch. They're good, but just not quite right. Articulation has stayed pretty much true to Gravity Builder. We've got up and down on the head, left and right. We've got friction out to the side, ratchets out to the front. The guns do not stay in the hands very securely at all. Uh, they are hinged you meant to be able to pull those tighter but they don't really hold the guns in very tight at all we've got rotation on there we've got a bend on the elbow rotation on the wrist we do have rotation on the waist on a lovely ratchet joint the gun again in this hand doesn't really peg and hold in as well as it should we have hip skirts to the front <coughs> this joint is pretty solid as to, is that one? Maybe too solid. <laughs> uh, there is an upper thigh rotation. We get a bend on the knee, revealing our combining port, which can be kind of kept down in there. There is a bend on the knee, which comes up. Uh, the combiner port can be brought down as well, I believe. But again, that is incredibly stiff. And as previously mentioned, the feet do go up and down, tilt side to side, and we can go left and right, but it really needs to be tightened. Uh, as much as I love having a really, really crazy wide stance, he does hold a remarkably wide stance, a combination of those ridiculously tight ratchet joints on those thighs and the ability to have a really flat footed pivot. And the same goes for hook. We can go up, down, left, and right. Uh, we've got friction forwards and backwards. We've got ratchet out to the side. We have the ability to move the shoulder pads up, upper bicep rotation, bend on the elbow again, quite loose gun placement, uh, rotation on the wrist, open and close on the hands, rotation on the waist, hip skirt to the front, allows for leg movement forwards backwards, out to the side, upper thigh rotation. Now there is a bend on the knee, it's on a friction joint, uh, but you do have to kind of move this part here because it sits and locks that knee into position. And again, with the feet, we have the heel spurs which flip out and we can pivot left and right, rotate left and right. But unfortunately with this, we can't move the toe and heel independently. Transformation remains pretty true to the source and you don't have to uh, take the crane hook off, uh, but it makes life a thousand times easier because this is just ridiculously huge. Uh, the first port of action is to make sure that it's sitting at the base, like so. We can open up this front chest cavity that comes down, the head flips in. There are these tabs on the back of the hands. These lift up. And this panel lifts up, the hands can then rotate inside. This closes off like so. And then we can bring this detail section back down as well. We have these shoulder pieces which can flip upwards on either side. And that allows the arms to come up and then bring this joint all the way up like so and then rotate this wheel section. That's gonna come around, that's gonna tab in, and then these are gonna push and tab in together. That was very fluid indeed. You can then close off the backs of those arms, like so, make sure this is nice and tight. And then this piece here is going to slide and rotate around like so. And we have a tab there and a tab there, holding that back piece into position. Come to the legs, these panels flip up 
and around on both sides and bring these wheels out to the outside, which allows us to bring these down. This front panel flips around, rotates up, and that's just gonna tab in to the front. Like that. The front panels then push and tab in together. Bring the feet round to the underside. They are gonna push and lock in like so. And then holding these wheels in place, they are gonna rock down and slide into the underside of those wheels and then just push and locate either side. You can lift this cab piece up. This opens up like so. We have space for the gun storage. Just flip that down. That's gonna compress and then just tab in like so pushing and sealing off. These go straight. This comes up and over, pushes and locks down into position. And just for extra security, this piece here can just come across and tab down. These ladders are gonna flip down on either side, like so. And from here, grab your crane. This is going to come in. That's gonna slide all the way down. This tabs into the base, and then this is gonna rotate around. We're gonna straighten this panel off. And there we have our crane. It's a pretty good looking crane. Uh, I love the fact that we've got these hydraulic rams as well. So they can be put them down for stabilization and then we can ratchet the crane up. And of course it also extends all the way out. Now to transform up the big man. It's pretty straightforward. You want to lift up this panel here, rotate his head around, and that's just gonna whoop over to the side, and then we can close that piece back off. Now, whether you have it uh, up, displayed upwards, or whether you separate it, or whether you had it kind of separated over onto the one side, they need to be tabbed together, and we need to bring this up. Feet compressed together, and then rocking up on this hinge here. They just sit on the inside of those shins, these pieces on the side here, rotate down, and these wheels flip outwards, locating on the outside. Make sure you flip his flaps so they go down to the outside. So you want to flip these up and over, like so, and again up and over, like that. And you see you've got this space here, bring in his gun, compress it, this piece comes upwards like so, and we've got this tab. And basically we're gonna run this in, push and tab those together. So we now has a kind of exhaust system thing going on. Uh, these knee sections are incredibly tight. I personally recommend a tool of some description because <laughs> that was a mission and a half. Uh, these do not want to nip together as nicely as I would like. Now check the wheels on the arms. Make sure that they are rocked all the way down. I think as standard, they actually come rocked down out of the package. So uh, it's not a big deal, really. Uh, you want to make sure that this piece here is facing upwards. You want to just straighten off this rotating joint underneath and then grab these arms. These are going to separate like so, and rotate like that. And then as they're here, this pushes down inside and just pushes and locks into place. These then rotate around. These can come all the way across and those are gonna push and lock into place. And then this piece here tabs on the side panel. And I believe these parts flip up and over like so. We can then bring in our chest section. And then this comes in, that's gonna tab in to this panel at the front. Just push that in 
like so. And I believe that's it for our dump truck as well. Again, that's a pretty nice size. It's a pretty solid build, although there does seem to be a lot going amiss on the underside here. It doesn't really tab in as well as I would have liked, but it is a big giant kind of dump truck. Here they are alongside Optimus Prime to give you an idea of how they scale. Now this young man is a fairly pivotal part of the combination. He forms the lower torso. So you want to take these pieces off and these are going to slide back out from underneath. They are well and truly Ugh, wedged in there. There we go, that's slid out. And again, with this side, slide that piece out, fold these pieces back on both sides. And this panel here is going to collapse back down like we had it in robot mode. Lift up this crotch plate, which tabs the crotch piece in. And these are going to split, they're gonna rock down like so and around these wheels flip and tab in to the backs of the legs we then have this tab here this is going to come out this comes around and this goes on the inside here and this is going to lock this piece in together either side of the crotch so we've got this one here and this one there that's going to go nice and smoothly like so and then this tabs down using those exterior tabs these panels can flip and flip so that we're extending them all the way out and we want to rotate this upper torso around and you just want to slide that back in again and now we have a tab here which is going to locate on the fist which stores that into position. So again, push, lock that in, and then push and tab that on to that back panel. And then this rocks around and around, and then again, splits and splits. Come to these knees, lift those up, lift those up. And as previously mentioned, I would personally get some sort of tool to bring these down. Tilt these wheels down. So they go diagonally like so, and we actually have... Right, so, there we go, they're around to the side. That is our lower torso. And to build our upper torso, make sure that the hydraulic stabilizers are in. This is gonna untab like so. And then this is just gonna come all the way around like this. This piece here is going to come up and then separating these two pieces, they're gonna fold around like so, and that's gonna come all the way to the front and just push and tab in. Come to this headpiece. These panels are gonna open up on either side, like so. This top piece here rotates around like so. Bring the head back, that's gonna sink down into that crevice. And these back panels are just gonna push. This thing comes forwards and rotates back, which then allows this to tab in at the front, like so, and come backwards, lifts up. And we can then bring in this retaining tab, like so, and bring that back down. And then with the back of the head, bring that around, Come in and push and close that off. We're gonna use this tab here and these here. They're just gonna tab in to the top of our dump truck. Push in and push and tab like so. This thing comes up to the back and that's gonna push and lock in on both sides. Now I actually used a butter knife to bring those out because it kind of wedges in and tops and turns out. I've got our battery section here, and I believe we put I believe we put this in this way round so that it pushes against the button. I mean, it's not bad. It 
it's nice to have options. Open up the chest wings. This piece goes up and then we're going to tab these in on the front using this tab here like so and this tab on the side and again over on this side there's a tab on the front and here he is with all of his limbs fully combined up uh, he does look a lot nicer in my opinion than the generation toys version and especially the cheaper bootlegs of the generation toys version i really do prefer that kind of red visor on the head sculpt but he would look a thousand times better in my opinion if he had the generation toys upgrade kit on him uh, prime here is just shown for scale now obviously he is not as tall as constructor who still somewhat towers over the gravity builder but at the same time, if you took the unique toys route for your Bruticus, then these two look exceptional together. And yes, I am missing the piece off Bruticus's chest. It's in storage, as everything is, isn't it? But yeah, I think those two look pretty darn good together. There is something about this guy though that has a very unique charm. It's not done to the highest, highest of standards, but there are third parties out there that don't put as much effort in to their figures as what this guy has. I mean, he is a good, big, solid lump, but he's not without his flaws. Uh, the head can move up and down, left and right. We've got the ratchets on the shoulders, up and down. We can bring them out and up to the side. We've got the bends on the elbows. All of that rotation and all of those articulated fingers. There is a rotation on the waist. Legs can come forward and back out to the side. You get bends and on the knee, although that joint does tend to pop out. And of course we get rotation up and down pivot on the feet, but he is not the most stable of figures. However, I pose him, he does tend to want to fall forwards. I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing wrong. He has all of the supports out that he's meant to have out. And he just always seems to be precariously balanced. I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong with him. Now I do especially like how he looks with his gun in hand. And although it would appear that these are aimed towards the kind of generations line. If you get yourself a copy of the Kulban Bow, Optimus Prime, the latest one, uh, review will be going up my channel shortly. Uh, bring him in and he can kind of have it. I think that works exceptionally well. Obviously this is a KO of the generation toys kit. Uh, so it's very fitting. <laughs> it looks pretty good with this oversized Devastator. Now I will hang on to this piece just until we get those upgrade parts to see if it makes a difference. Uh, if it doesn't, then this will be going up for sale. As much as I like it, I don't love it. It doesn't tick every single box for me and I'm more than happy with Toy World Constructor, but if you're looking for a budget Devastator that'll beat the likes of the Hasbro Devastator, then this could well be the one for you because he looks insanely good on display. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And until next time, from myself and the Jimbao Devastator, a good